This is an example of uh, how MediaView incorporates um, a 3D uh, manipulation and viewing capability that was developed by Pixar. Uh, and in, it's incorporated into MediaView as an, as an embedded tool. Um, so I'll begin by opening a blank MediaView window. And I have some uh, prepared text information, uh, and instead of typing it by hand, I'll just drag this into the MediaView uh, input window. And this reveals the information um, about RenderMan and when it was released and when it uh, first appeared in a release of uh, MediaView. September 8th, 1992, uh, coincident with the 3.0 release of Next Step, Pixar's 3D kit was included. And as it says, that included a version of Pixar's RenderMan system. Uh, in a moment, I'm actually going to uh, give an example of how that uh, works in MediaView by instantiating um, a 3D view capability. Uh, but before I do, um, I just would like to give a little bit of background information on how RenderMan works with the um, MediaView system and with the Next Step system. So uh, before we uh, continue, uh, one of the first things I want to point out is that when the 3.0 release of uh, Next Step came out, uh, the original uh, Windows server, and that was the server that came out with the first version of Next Step, that Windows server was PostScript only, two-dimensional only. With the advent of the 3.0 release, uh, the engineers at Next added another capability to that Windows server so that it could understand uh, what's called RIB code, uh, Render Man Interactive Byte Stream. This is the designation of the file. And so if a three-dimensional uh, stream of information was sent, the byte stream information, uh, it would uh, do the rendering that was specified by Quick Render Man and send the information back to whatever the output window was that requested uh, that rendering uh, capability. Um, in Next step then, uh, there I have just brought up a preference panel and I wanted to point out that there can be many uh, Next systems on a network, all of which are running this same version of Next Step. That is, there will be a RenderMan server incorporated into the Windows server. In order for uh, rendering to be done on more than one machine, uh, I'm going to show the capability of saying this is a very difficult uh, uh, task that I have and I want to share it among several different machines. In order for that to happen, there is a preferences item which is called Unix Expert and Large File System, but more than that, Security Options, Public Windows Server. I have that box checked. So Public Windows Server means anyone else on my network can discover that my Windows server is available for whatever rendering job, two-dimensional or three-dimensional, uh, and uh, it will actually utilize uh, some cycles on my machine. The other things I would like to point out is that with RenderMan, uh, there came a tool called Render Manager, and I've just clicked on that. I just want to bring up the panel to demonstrate what it includes. It has a list of servers, and there's only one machine on this network, the one I'm sitting at, and it's called localhost, uh, the server is. And um, what's going on here is that I've got three different capabilities. I can specify a new server, and that would then look on the network and allow me to, uh, and it's uh, not working because there's nothing else on my network, but it would allow me to look on the network for anyone who had a public Windows server check. Uh, and then there's a, cons uh, a uh, configure box uh, where I can set up the access. I can make it private or public locally. Uh, and then I can actually click on the rendering queue and if I had several machines working on this now, this would give me information about what's happening in the rendering process. 
So with that in mind, uh, and this just emphasizes the role of uh, uh, RenderMan in MediaView and the fact that it is on a distributed network and can uh, allow one to uh, distribute the rendering task among several machines. In order to insert a uh, 3D render man view, I'm pointing to this icon in the icon well, which is colored. It's a small teapot. Um, I'm going to locate this right between these two um, paragraphs here so that it'll be convenient. We can continue to read what is happening. I just drag it into this location and ask that this view be inserted there. What's happening now is I need to specify the name of a rib file, the RenderMan interactive byte stream file. Uh, so I have some on my directory and uh, I'll specify it. Uh, this is demo material and RM for RenderMan and I'll pick one called elephant.rib. Now these rib files are all full of representations of bicubic polynomials. We'll see how that works in just a moment. So I say OK for that. And it's reading the contents of that rib file and putting it into this location here. So what has happened is I now have uh, this viewer I specified the size. And it's difficult to see uh, what this means or what it looks like. But I just want to point out right now, without any additional action, this is ready for manipulation. I've got my cursor. I pointed it somewhere in the middle of the display window. And I'm going to click and rotate. And you can see this entity. And it, it is going to turn out to be an elephant. I can rotate it in several different degrees of freedom. I have another auxiliary tool, which I can launch by double clicking on this wind on this uh, embedded window and this is has some more 3d con view controls and um, I'm going to actually specify that I don't want to do any shading of even crude shading I'm going to go to all straight line representation so there you can see this very complex thing and it's too close to us so with this tool these uh, this uh, spherical tool uh, I can both rotate and translate, and I'm going to push this away from us. And it's gradually receding. And finally, if we go far enough away, it's going to be recognizable. As an elephant. Well, maybe not quite recognizable. Let's actually do some additional manipulations. Um, let me rotate him a bit so that we can stand him up straight. Oops, a little bit too far. Well, we we'll just leave them in that position. And now I'll turn on uh, rough shading just to see that what we've got here is an, a pink elephant with a couple of tusks. And I've also got the capability of turning on very smooth shading. This would take advantage of the bicubic polynomial representation. And so there's the smoothest possible rendering that we can get uh, for that elephant. Well, I'll leave him in that orientation because I think the, the point has been made. Uh, so um, I created this document from scratch just to, to give an example of uh, how we can use the RenderMan capability. Uh, every time I made a change or a request of, of change in orientation, that information was passed on from this tool uh, or from the rendering window itself, if I choose not to use the tool, passed on to the rendering machine, that is the Windows server, uh, just on my machine, because I'm the only one on the network, uh, and it would react 
by re-rendering the three-dimensional representation of all the bicubic polynomials into a, a different shape by rendering it and sending a stream of TIFF information which was then composited into this window to give the the next representation. So uh, we'll close this and um, I'll close the um, save this and we'll call it let's see under demo material under render man well let's call it babar why not and there it's been saved so we'll close media view and go to the location where we saved babar there it is I can and I'll just double click on it and now remember uh, it's fully saved this would be just as if we were opening up a document over the network that had been sent to us and it's going to uh, incorporate all the textual information and the the last rendered state of that elephant and there there it is and now as I uh, indicated earlier on I don't have to open up click on any box to open up a panel I can go directly to this window where the elephant is displayed and it won't move very fast because I've got full rendering turned on but we actually see that there is some reaction uh, to making uh, changes in the orientation in this document